and welcome back to devlog number 15. Hope you're all having a good day. And yes, no more math videos for a while. So back to b-roll heavy devlogs, which I just know is everyone's favorite. Quick word of warning up top, there's been another demo day. Yes, it's been two months. So I'm going to be uploading playthroughs of demos I've played for the developers so they get good feedback. These have lower production value and are completely uncut. If you're not interested, just don't watch them. So looking back a few episodes, I remember that I just kind of skimmed over a part about how I textured my models. Of course I said I first did grayscale, then added in color, but I am always the first to admit that I am no artist. I'm just clever enough to get by. So when I was looking at Bixinski's work and getting very inspired, I knew I could never recreate it myself. Bixinski was an artist, whereas talented kindergartners are better than me. Of course I could commission an artist, but so far I've spent zero dollars on sick transit, and I'm gonna try to keep it that way. Instead, I decided to use my enslaved silicon for my model's textures. Now, what do I mean by that? I'm certain you're all familiar with these hot new image generating algorithms. Feed them a text prompt and they'll spit out an image. I actually got the idea for how I'm texturing my models from a real cool artist I follow on Twitter, Necro13. See the description for a link to his Twitter. He uses generated images to kibash together something new, and his stuff is really cool. I like how he does things a lot more than what I've seen some people do, just typing in prompts and claiming the generated image as their own novel art. As I said earlier, I'm no artist, but I do have unqualified opinions about what is and is not art. So I decided to do something similar. I used generated images as stencils that I used to paint my textures in Blender. Is this legal? Am I violating copyright? Who's to say? Big brand legal scholars are speculating on the topic, but until the courts settle it, this is an exciting new frontier in law. And besides, it seems like all of Beksinski's works are copyrighted in Poland, and since the US and Poland have an extradition treaty, yours truly could win an all expenses paid trip to the beautiful and historically rich country of Poland. I've wanted to go to Poland for years now, so this is a win-win for me. Alright, let's see what happens when we press play. I'm basically kit bashing textures, which works for me. And since I'm using a separate GPU, I can set up stable diffusion to run while I use my regular GPU to do other stuff. Yeah, it's not as fast as it could be if I had a Gucci or GPU, but hey, that's fine. I have time. Luckily for me, these AI generated images not being able to do hands well is actually a benefit for my brand of body horror light art. So here's how I go about things. I sketch a sub kindergartner tier idea of what I want in my development notebook, noting what textures I'm going to want. Then while I'm working on the model in Blender, I'm also running the algorithm, reviewing the textures I get. Then depending on if the model has a bunch of parts, I'll paint the textures before or after rigging. This one had a lot of separate parts, so I painted the parts independently before rigging. After that, yada yada yada, same thing as I covered in the original Wretch Blender episode. All about layering the stencils, fiddling with the brush fall off and strength values. I like to paint my values and colors to separate textures, so that way I can do some shader graph stuff before baking it all to a final texture. If any of you watched my bicameralism shitpost video, you know I have ambivalent ideas about machine learning and AI systems, but you know, I gotta do what I gotta do. So. If any of you are interested in 3D art, but don't want to do texture work and don't want to use boring flat textures either, you can do what I did and use your enslaved silicon to not improve as an artist. And you know, you don't need to break the bank to do so. Four gigs is perfectly fine. And yeah, I accidentally forgot to mark the textures with fake users, so I had to redo them. Oops. It happens. And well, check out this new model. It will be one of the NPCs that the player will deliver messages between. There will be less than a dozen of them in total, but they're all going to be unique. I'm also going to have the sphere on top be a special screen space texture, so it's going to be a different material than the rest of the model. So I didn't do it yet. Anyway, that's it for this devlog. As I said at the start of the episode, there's been another demo day. You should check it out. I haven't played anything yet, but some games have already caught my eye and just looking at what's been submitted, it seems, as always, there's a great variety. 63 entries in total. 
Wow. If you're interested in game development or perhaps want to see how the sausage is made, you should play anything that catches your eye and give the developer feedback. As a dev myself, feedback really is the most valuable thing and it's always appreciated. Everything is free and most of the downloads are under one gigabyte. I haven't downloaded a Bitcoin miner yet, so jump on in. The water's just fine. Link to the entry page is in the description. As always, thank you for watching. I appreciate your time and I hope you have a good day. If you liked the video, please give it a like. And if you want to follow along with my development videos, please subscribe. If you're interested in game dev, I have a series of videos covering important math topics that are practical for game development. They're in their own separate playlist, so check that out. I'm also on Twitter. I've been tweeting. Yes, really. You can follow me at dev underscore Natsu, and I know you're expecting baking, but first, I noticed that this video is set to release on Veterans Day. I have a number of friends who served in the military, and even my younger cousin, um, he's going to college on the ROTC program now, so um, thank you all for your service. And with that, on to baking. So, you know me, I have to keep sourdough in rotation, and we're back to sourdough. And as you can see, it this one turned out really good. I think, um, you know, I made one recently, so this is... So I'm speaking from the future. I made one recently, and I think it's just, you know, it's winter time. Things are just getting a little too cold. I didn't give enough time to rise. Whereas looking back at this one, this one, these two loaves look great. Um, you know, even you, you can see on this one, I got a nice ear. It's a good color, just really good. You know, I've been doing this single cut more frequently, and it's it's been working out better than uh, how I used to do things. But uh, you know, let's we look at the cross section. You know, you can see it's it's classic. It's it's good looking. It's attractive. Nice nice bubbles. Again, I think this one was about um, seventy five percent hydration. Just you know, nice, comfortable, easy to work with. Around seventy five. I always you know, I had a bit of water. Just you know, whatever. And here's the picture of the second loaf. This one I believe came out better. And it, you know, I just I like taking a picture of it. In the Dutch oven with the parchment paper, it looks it looks cozy. Like damn, this is a cozy loaf, and I got a nice, I got a really good ear on this one, uh, and that's why I gave it away as a gift. So this is this is the second one, the one that I was giving away as a gift um, to my friend. Uh, <laughs> since it's the more attractive one, I gave it away, of course, because you know that's how I am. But even yeah, as you can see on this picture. It's, it's nice looking. Oh, you can see my kombucha in the background there. <laughs> yeah, I booch. <laughs> and so here we are at his place. I've, I've ceremoniously cut the bread for him. And I've, I've, you know, it's a different lighting setup. So as you can see, he has big windows. Uh, he has a big bunch of windows to the left. So I get a lot more cooler outside light. Um, <clears throat> compared to my the warm light setup in the kitchen but still like you know this is also a great bread but anyways yes i you know i'm always telling you give it away bread or whatever you bake as a gift and i gave away you know as always i give away stuff as a gift myself because you know it's a great thing to share people appreciate it and you know once you learn how to do it it's pretty easy to do and you can make some amazing food and people will just appreciate it you know but anyways that's it for this episode. Uh, the yeast in the air is free. Go out there and bake. It's delicious, it's good for you, and it makes a great gift. And see you next time.